live from Studio 550, this is The McGraw Show on KTRS. 938 here on the Big 550 KTRS. We all know about the Final Four going on in uh, Atlanta, but there is a lesser-known Final Four championship taking place in Washington, D.C. next weekend, and it is the four top college teams when it comes to chess. One of those four teams is Webster University. And to talk about it is the coach, Susan Polger, uh, and they're uh, the youngest American to achieve the Grand Master ranking, Ray Rob- Robson. Ray, is that right? Ray Robson? Yes, that's right. Ray, welcome to Big 550 KTRS. Susan, welcome to Big 550 KTRS. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> what are the three other teams you are playing against? We will have, uh, as our main competitors, the University of Texas at Dallas and uh, UMBC, that's the Baltimore. Right. And, and then th- Illinois, University of Illinois. Oh, all right. So a little bit of barn burner. Will we be able to watch this on TV or, or, or the Internet anywhere? Actually, not on TV, but on the Internet, most likely. Uh, you can follow it through uh, www.chessdailynews.com. Explain how a chess match works ray chime in here how, how is this going to work does, does, does everybody play one match does one guy play how, how does all this work uh okay so each team has um four players playing at one time but there's also two reserves so you can switch out your your lineup so the four people playing uh, against the other teams four and they're all going on at the same time and basically you can win, lose, or draw, so you can win a match. You just go by the match score. It could be 2.5 to 1.5, or it could be 4-0. Um, what? So it just depends on the result of all the games. Is it like, the best of? Or what What each individual match? Is it one game take takes all, or is it best of 7, or best of 12, or how does that work? No, each team plays uh, one match against each other. One match, it's round gotcha. robin. So each match against each each team is four games. Gotcha. So we have three matches, 12 games uh, total. And whoever scores the most, you can we can score 12 at most, but maybe eight or nine is sufficient to win. Is there a bit of a renaissance in the chess game, or do we see it more here because of Rex Singfield and what he's doing with uh, chess in the region? I think there is a whole new buzz uh, in chess in the world in general. Since the days of Bobby Fischer back in the 70s, now we have a new megastar in Magnus Carlsen, who is a very young uh, uh, Norwegian grandmaster. Right. And uh, he's, he's just uh, such a big star outside of chess. He's even doing modeling and, and other things. Right. He's a megastar. And uh, I think they compare him in many ways with Bobby Fischer because he's kind of N- not in the bad ways, but not in, in the bad ways, <laughs> but, but in the good ways. In the good ways, exactly, because he comes from a country that didn't have any chess history, practically, and he came and beats all the so former Soviet players and everybody else. So he's pretty amazing. Susan, you are a men's grandmaster, right? Right. Ray, you're a you're a grandmaster, right? Uh huh. You're the youngest. He he's the youngest grandmaster ever. Is that right? In the U.S. In, in the U.S. Explain what is a grandmaster. What does that mean? Okay. Well, in chess, there are certain like titles or statuses, and grandmaster is the highest. Like there's. Um, how do you earn that? Do you? How do you earn grandmaster? Well, basically, you uh, there's something called the grandmaster norm. It's basically you have to perform uh, at a certain level, uh, and you need to get three norms. So three times performing um, at a rating of uh, level of over 2600 which is pretty high is it is it subjective or is it objective it, it's objective so, so so once you reach a certain level mm-hmm. but but how can it be objective because you have to beat so many other people you have to there are specific rules of what uh, the opponents need to have a certain high ratings that has to be at least uh, three grandmasters among your nine opponents let's say that have to be from different countries uh, there are specific requirements that's based on a mat- mathematical formula on on how you sure. can make norms, and then on top of it, you need to have also a published rating uh, of at least twenty five hundred to become a grandmaster. Gotcha. Now, how can Susan? How? Um, wh- well, first with this final four, do you scout the other teams? Do you know their tendencies, or do you go in blind and just play y- your own game? <laughs> no, no, it's absolutely not a matter of uh, blindness or, <laughs> or randomness. We actually study their games. It's it's a very 
elaborate work actually to try to find the right matchups, you know, which team member of the six, let's say, should play against a particular opponent in the various teams. So we study whether it's white or black and, and different uh, matchups. And then we go to the database that has close to 7 million games. And from that, we look at uh, their particular games of our potential opponents. There are three teams times six, that's 18. And so we study their games, uh, both with black and white, and try to come up with the right strategy. Uh, Ray, would you rather be white or black? Um, That's a weird question. I've never really asked anybody before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess you mean in the chess sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, normally, white uh, white moves first and has the advantage. And um, generally, I'm more aggressive player, so having white is uh, definitely an advantage for me. So is uh, so you like to take your queen out, don't you, early? Um, if the, <laughs> the position calls for it, um, yeah. Susan, as a coach, do you, do you recommend taking the, the queen out early? Generally not terribly early, and I liked his answer that uh, if the possession warrants it, yes, but normally otherwise keep her in the, the back. army into the game first, and then the queen comes to give the mate. At, do the you outcome. do you coach um, preferring white or black to start with, or does it matter? Unfortunately, it's not a choice. You typically get about fifty fifty of it, you know, so maybe one more on one color or the other. So you have to be just ready for both. Do you? I love chess. I'm terrible at it. Just to, I can't beat the computer at all. I mean, I get six moves and I'm out. Is it, is it, I know it's a skill and I know it's art and a skill together and I know it's a game, but do you, is it a higher plane for you guys? Do you see 12, 15, 18 moves ahead and I'm only seeing one or two ahead? Well, chess actually is largely pattern recognition. So most of the time we don't need to see 12, 15, 18 moves ahead. We can, when in some cases we do need to calculate that far, especially in end games or in some very tactical positions, it requires to see that long. But normally it's sufficient to see two, three, four moves ahead. Right. And and then you evaluate whether should I go left or right. Ray, how did you know you were a chess man? Um, I didn't really know at first. I just played chess for fun with my dad, and then I started playing tournaments eventually, and it was really interesting for me. And uh, I just kept going, and eventually I started to improve a lot. And uh, I guess at that point I realized that there was some potential for me in chess. How long does a chess match take? Oh, it can go easily four or five hours. Four or five hours, mm -hmm. straight. Straight, and that's no, there's no break. And unlike in other sports, while we do have substitutes on the team, not within the same game. It's just between the different rounds. Like let's say UTD, we have to pick four players and then no substitute during that round. Next round, we'll play, let's say, UMBC. Then we can have a different... Uh, so style. you might have somebody play three matches in a day. Uh, usually not more than two, but still, even two but can two, take two easily is ten hours. Ten hours yeah, yeah. of, of mind-grinding thought process. <laughs> exactly. Now, Ray, what type of, um, what type of, um, what type of performance-enhancing drugs do you take? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess in chess, the only one is caffeine, but even that, I don't. Yeah, so there's no, there's no, there's no mind something, no nothing, no no, no dose, nothing, huh? Nothing. Steroids don't work for you or anything like that. Mm, not um, so far. It, <laughs> um, it, it's mentally got to be exhausting. Oh yeah, you know sometimes people ask me if chess is a sport, and I said, oh yeah, you believe it is. You know, to even sit ten hours and focus with the, the fullest of your concentration, it's very not only mentally but physically draining. As yeah, well. uh, is speed chess? Good for you, Ray, or is it bad for you? Um, do you get into bad habits? I, uh, some people do. I don't think it's bad. I think most, uh, lots of strong chess players enjoy playing speed chess and are good at it. And I don't think it affects their normal game too much. And most people at Webster are playing speed chess sometimes. Uh, coach, do you agree? I actually am one of those coaches who support playing uh, speed chess. I think it's good because you get to try out different ideas rather than spending uh, an hour on one game. You got to play maybe 20, 30 games in one hour. So I think it's a good idea, as long as you don't overdo it. Sure. Uh, what about intimidation? Is chess a game of intimidation, Ray? Um, some, sometimes. Some people do try to in intimidate, I guess, uh, purposely. For example, um, the top-ranked U.S. chess player, Hikaru Nakamura, is known kind of for being uh, intimidating, and I think he wants to be. 
And also, for example, great champions like Garry Kasparov was very intimidating um, with his just his presence. Uh, so chess is about intimidation in some ways, but me personally, I don't try to intimidate anyone. I just well, play I can my game. Well, oh, with that body. Come on, now you're scaring <laughs> everybody with that body. What do you weigh? Uh, Eighty two pounds, so soaking wet, Ray. Um, <laughs> The, it, but how does one intimidate somebody else playing chess? What what do they do? Well, sometimes with staring or or comments they make uh, in between games or things like that. Is there like intimidation where like somebody's like really nice to you and it's weird, right? <laughs> they, they sort of get into your head with like, oh, great move. Oh boy, I didn't see that coming. Great move. Can you talk during a match? Is there like trash talking? No, not not during a serious competition. No, not not allowed to talk. No. Are you allowed to say anything? Nothing. Okay. No, really. Interesting. The only conversation that can be during a game is if one side or another offers a draw. Gotcha. Because it's bad form, it's bad etiquette, or no, it's and not or allowed by the rules. It's period. against the law. Mm-hmm. Interesting. All right. Good. All right. Uh, Ray Robson, you have a book out too, right? Called Chess Child. Um. Yep. Uh, the story of Ray Robson. Ray Robson, uh, America's youngest grandmaster. Chess child, written by Gary. Is that Gary, your dad, your yes, brother, your dad? My dad. All right. Good. Do you approve of this? Is this the unauthorized biography or the authorized biography? Uh, I. I. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> well, I don't know. My dad wanted to write a book about me. Um, I guess at some point, uh, maybe when I was ten or eleven, and he started developing the. The book, but uh, he kept having to rewrite it. I guess as I progressed, and uh, eventually, after I became a grandmaster, he decided that it was time to finally publish it. And well, that's re- what he really wanted to do. So Good. I don't want to stop him. Good for him. All right, the book is called Chess Child. I'm sure you can get it at Amazon.com as well as other places, right? Um, I believe so. Yeah. All right. Good. The book is called Chess Child. Ray, best of luck. Thank uh, you. This 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 weekend, Webster Uni- University is in the final four of the college. Uh, chess championship in Washington, D.C. Susan, get him to bed early. Uh, make sure he's eating all the right things. Tape up his ankles and uh, <laughs> get him ready for the tournament. Yes, we will. You got it. Try to make St. Louis proud. Good luck. Uh, it's 9.50 here on the Big 550 KTRS. Don't miss the Dennis George Show. Well, wait a minute. That's me. 